Well, hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Last week, I got a lot of questions about these flowers, which were on my table. And yes, they're real. And yes, they are checkered. They're called snake's head fritillaries. And they grew very well here because they like the wet. At the end of the video, I'll take my camera outside and I'll show you them growing in the garden, give you some nice close-ups. But mainly today, I realised that it was ages since I had done any making in these videos. So I decided that I would show you how to make one of these little star pin cushions. I've been making a few of them over the past weeks because when I was in Naples, the project that I was doing was this. This is English pieced patchwork and it's a diamond design which was inspired by one of the floors I saw in Naples. Then came back and I'm making it into like a travel sewing kit. And that is the April project in the studio club. So if you want to join in with that, if you want to know more about that, I'll put all of the links to the studio club, which is kind of a creative community. Um, I'll put them in the description. And I loved making the little pink cushions so much that when I came back, I thought, mm, I wonder what other fabrics I can use. Because you see, I just love pin cushions. There's something just so satisfying about them. But also, I think that it is to do with the history of pin cushions and the way that that is the history of women and also the history of friendship. So if you go back a few hundred years, clothes weren't sewn together as entire objects. They weren't like an outfit that was sort of ready to go. Instead, parts of the clothes would be pinned on. Now, sometimes this was like the white bits, the bits that could be washed. So you would have lace cuffs or a collar and that would just be pinned on. And then at the end of the day, it would be taken off and it would be washed separately. It's a kind of um, practical thing. But you also got um, fancier bits that would just be pinned on so that you could change your outfit, you know, fashionable embroidery and things, and they would just be um, pinned on. So where we think of pin cushions as being a dressmaker's accessory, a few hundred years ago, they would have been part of the stuff that you took out day to day because you would need to be able to repin your outfit if it went sort of like a bit wrong. You wouldn't want your collar falling off, whatever. So you would carry pins around. And if you think about it, before pins could be made by machine, they were being made by hand. So they were an expensive thing. They were something that you looked after that you would carry a pin cushion or maybe a little box around to make sure that you didn't lose your pins. This is where pin money, the phrase pin money comes from. It's not actually um, a small amount of money at all. Pins were quite expensive at the time people were talking about pin money. Um, and it's just one of these things that has changed over time. And then in the 19th century, pin cushions became something that you would give to a friend. You would make a pin cushion, you would elaborately decorate it. You might have messages about devotion and friendship on it, and you would exchange them with your friends. And I think that this is possibly connected in some ways to the times when you pinned on your clothes, because I don't believe that human nature changes. I think that circumstances change and um, the way we do things change. But I think human nature 
remains the same. So when I'm thinking of women going out with their clothes pinned on, and particularly at night, you know, or, or to social occasions, particularly social occasions, you'd go and you'd maybe pin on more elaborate lace or embroidery or whatever. And this was all kinds of people, not necessarily just aristocrats who would have maid servants with them. Um, but, you know, the, I think with pinned on clothes, there's going to be kind of um, problems with them. Your pins will come loose come out, and you're going to need help to pin things back. And it's not necessarily going to be something that you can do yourself. And it just reminds me of when there are wardrobe malfunctions now. And I mean, the number of, you know, restaurant loos that I've gone into, where there's been some poor woman struggling with the zip on a jumpsuit, um, and just waiting for somebody to come and help her. Um, I think it's exactly the same. And it's that kind of friendship and intimacy and kind of a, a closed female world of um, clothes and slight embarrassment and yeah so anyway I love pin cushions and they're also slightly squishy so what do you need to make your pin cushion first of all you're going to need some fabric um, it should be quite fine fabric and I am choosing to use these beautiful fine wools which I rescued um i suppose that is probably the word because they did come in a bin bag um from um a mill closure and it was a mill in the borders uh of borders of scotland and england and it was a mill that specialized in very high quality wools and silks lots of them sold to the italian market uh, some of them sold down to Savile Row, which is where all the very fine suits are made. And the mill went out of business, as so many mills in Scotland have. And I was able to acquire the, the, the bits of fabric that they had already cut for sample books, but hadn't stuck in. So this is what I have here. They're absolutely gorgeous gorgeous fabrics. This one is a silk hound's tooth and these are very fine wools. Um, I'm going to put together a little kit of supplies for making this uh, which will include these and all the other things that I'm going to show you. So you need your fabrics, you need a pair of sharp fabric scissors, you need two different types of thread. Now First one is for tacking, um, for sort of basically putting, putting the fabric around the shape here. You can see that I have used white thread there. It's also very rubbishy thread. <laughs> this is a thread that is quite old and as you can see it just snaps. So I couldn't use that for like proper sewing in case the seams didn't go. But for tacking, absolutely perfect. And then for the, the sewing, I'm using a much, much nicer thread. This is a cotton thread, which I use for freehand machine embroidery. And I've chosen this kind of very dull brown because with all the different tweeds, excuse me, all the different tweeds, the stitches won't show. Then you need a pin, my pin, quite a short pin, so that I can cut, um, use that to secure my template and speaking of templates you're going to need 10 little diamond templates like this. Now there are lots of places that you can download diamond uh, things, print them out and cut or you could just make your own um, template and draw around it uh, onto any kind of scrap paper and use that. When I went to Naples, I decided that I would get some pre-cut templates for the first time ever. Um, I felt it was a bit of an indulgence, but also much easier uh, than having to buy a 
pair of paper scissors as well as my fabric scissors. I am converted and the reason that I'm converted is that I have now used some of these little templates four times and they are still holding up brilliantly. They're actually very thin card, these ones, um, which I thought would be quite difficult to sew through but turned out to be perfectly fine. But more importantly for me, I can just save them all and reuse them several times on different projects. So you're going to need 10 of these. Then for stuffing your um, pin cushion, I recommend this. This is ground up walnut shells. They are usually used um, for reptile bedding or for sandblasting. Um, and you can get them in several different kind of grades. This one is a medium grade and that's what I recommend because you don't want it too fine so that it'll come out the seams. You can also use sand and that's what was used in a lot of early pin cushions but it does have a tendency to wear because it's um, see, it, it's going to wear away the seams eventually and you do see that in old ones that it's too uh, sharp really so if you're moving around with your pin cushion it might wear the seams and then to finish it off I am going to use a button and I have a, a wide range of um, buttons in a button box and I'm just going to choose one and put it in the middle. Now the great thing about the button in the middle is that before you sew the button, this is all quite um, squishy because obviously you have to get the filling in there and then sew it, but then as soon as you put the button in it squashes all of the filling into the points of the star makes a much, much nicer shape. So first thing, I'm going to cut out around this template. Now, choose a fabric here and then put it on the right side so that you can see it. I'm going to pin my diamond onto this fabric. Right. Now the important thing is that you put it going either up and down or across the way because you want the points to be on the grain of the fabric. And I'll show you why. So if I've got a bit of fabric like this and I pull it lengthways, um, it doesn't move. If I pull it widthways, it doesn't move. But if I pull it on the bias, so corner to corner, got really quite a stretch. Don't want that stretch in patchwork. So here I've got it going up the way. Then I'm just going to take my scissors and cut around it about three quarters of a centimeter turn. Um, I'll show you it. Now you can of course draw on your fabric so that you can get it into um, be very, very accurate, but they're so small, it's really just one thing of the scissors. And there we are, that is what you're looking for, so that this is the bit that turns over. Now I'm going to take my needle with the tacking thread, and actually I'll get a longer piece of thread, I think. So cut my tacking thread, pick up my needle and thread my needle and then I'm going to make a really big messy knot All right, by putting it around my fingers a few times and then sliding it off to be a knot. Look how messy that is. The reason for that is I want this to be as easy to take out as possible. So if the knot's really big, that's easy to see. If the tacking stitches are quite um, wide, they're easy to see and to snip when we're taking them out. Right, so then I am just sewing right the way around here. You want the fabric to be quite tight on to that template. Or right there. 
it round. I'm going to take the pin out now. And then all the way round. And you will have some kind of flaps um, coming out top and bottom where you're folded it over. That's fine. That's meant to be. Pop my thread through there and then I'm just going to chop it off. And you can see that these stitches are nice and wide so when is the final step we're taking all the papers out very simple to see them, snip them, pull them out. So now I have two done here. You can see how they will begin to fit into a star. I just have another eight to do. Right, so this is me nearly finished. And then right there to be a hole here for your stuffing to fall out, just do a few extra steps, uh, extra stitches to hold it nice and tight. Oh. Cut my thread. Put in my pin cushion. Next stage is to go and iron these really, really well because you're wanting all of these um, turnover bits to be really nice and flat and creased. Um, so yeah, bit of steam, nice and flat, um, and we'll move on to the next stage. So here I have my two stars, beautifully pressed now, and I am going to be sewing them together like this. But before that, what I'm going to do is just snip all of the tacking stitches on the back. I'm not going to take the papers out um, because I want the papers there just to keep the structure, but to make the final steps easier. I'm going to just cut the tacking stitches and the knots. Then I'm going to put the two stars together, very carefully matching up the edges. I'm going to pin it like this two pins through. And then I am going to sew right the way around the edge to here. So I'm going to sew the bottom three and then up the sides of the top two. But I'm going to leave this bit at the top. Um, and that's going to be to get the papers out and also to fill the pincushion with the walnut shells. So I've sewed up all the way around here, just have this bit at the top. And what I'm now going to do is to clip the stitches on this side, they may just pull out, and then very carefully extract the papers from inside, so she has to do it. Um, it is just a case of wiggling around using your fingers and then finding the paper and pulling it out. So you need to do that for all of them. Do the ones at the bottom first and then these ones at the top, I would say, um, do them very carefully because you want to keep that uh, folded over a bit nice and tight and leave them till the last bit. Right, and that's 
the last of those in. Then I'm just going to get rid of all of these tacking stitches and gently fold it back into place. You can, if you want, just hold this by tacking as well. Next thing that we're going to do is to fill it up with the walnut shells. So, easiest way is to get a funnel, pop it in there, and then bit by bit, use the funnel to kind of direct the walnuts so that they go right into the points and then Also, there we are. Now I had left a piece of thread at the top of one of those points of stars and a little needle. Even with fairy focals, I find threading needles quite challenging. There we go. Um, and then I'm going to Pop that in there. That's just the wee flap and start. You know, I'm going to take these glasses off. That's better. Um, put the flappy bits down. This is the most tricky bit of the whole thing. And then very, very carefully start to over sew this final seam. You want to keep your stitches quite small because obviously you don't want the stuffing to fall out. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew down to the middle bit there. Then I'm going to add a little bit more stuffing and do the final few centimetres. And as I say, if you're wanting to make a um, pincushion exactly like this one, then I have put together some kits in the shop which have uh, these fabrics, button, uh, needle threads, and uh, some of the walnut stuff. Now, I think I've got space for a teeny bit more of this. Um, so I'm just gonna shake it into my funnel. There we are. Fold over that seam allowance there. Hold it together, hold it together, Jane, and sew up the final bit of the seam. You can see about 14 stitches on each of these long bits of the diamond. So nice and neat so that you can hardly see the stitches. And then as I come up to the end of this, I'm going to have to squash those flappy bits in. You could use um, a knitting needle or a pencil or something to do that. It's quite difficult doing this while holding it up for the video. Final couple of stitches, top there make sure it comes to a nice point. And then I'll just stitch over two or three times and put my thread deep into the pincushion, pull the needle out and chop it off. Right, and here we have a star pincushion. Now you could just leave it like that but what I like to do is to add a button, which as I say, just keeps all of the stuffing in the points of the stars. So first of all, squash the stuffing into the edges, then get a piece of thread and double it up. So you're wanting it to be about that kind of length Double it up so that it's really nice and strong and 
put the two cut ends into your needle. Okay, now I'm using a longer needle for this so that it will go right the way through the pin cushion if I ever get it threaded. There we are. So I have the two cut ends at one bit and then I have this loop at the other. Jab it straight through the pin cushion from one side to another, making sure that the needle comes out at the centre of the star. Pull it, but not all the way, so you still want this loop at this side. Then jab it back again. You need to take a few um, stitches. You don't want it to go out the same hole. And then back into the middle. Pull it, and then you're going to go through this loop. And that, when you pull it tight, will give you a really nice dimple in the front. And again, you could leave it like that. But I'm going to sew on a button. So, or choose a nice button. I think I'm just going to go for a very plain one on this one. See, so put the button on the thread. And then just keep jabbing it right the way to the back. You could do a button on either side, actually. I can find another one with two, two holes. Or, or, basically just sewing the buttons on backwards and forwards through the buttons, make sure that they are very well attached. And then when you're happy with that, I would just bring your needle up on one of the seams, do a tiny stitch, but don't pull it because you don't want to distort the whole thing. And then out there and snip. And that will just work its way back in. A little tacking stitch there, exactly the same. I'm just going to snip that off. And there we have the star pin cushion. And now, as I promised earlier, I am going to take you outside to show you these flowers. They are called snake's head fritillaries, um, and they are a water meadow uh, plant. They are uh, from a comb, and here, because we are very, very wet, and in the summer the ground doesn't ever completely dry out, they are very, very happy and have self-seeded, so we have proper clumps all over the place. So I will leave you um, with the snake's head fritillaries and thank you so much for watching and let me know whether you enjoyed watching something that was more of a, a tutorial and if you need any more information it's all in the description below and I will see you next week. Bye bye.